Hi, welcome to another episode of Cello Chat. My name is John Stewart. Today we're going to talk about shifting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shifting is the method in which we go from one position or place on the cello to another. So let's talk a little bit about mechanics that will help you. Okay, whenever I'm finding a new note on the cello or a higher note on the cello, uh, I go right after that higher note. So um, let's uh, examine this E right here. Right? So the, finding notes on the cello, there's really two ways to go about it. One of them is how it feels or where it is on the fingerboard. And then the other is how it sounds. So ultimately we want our ear to decide if a note is in tune or out of tune. However, um, it can help us, we can, we can help the process along and get in the ballpark by thinking of it more uh, physically where it is on the fingerboard. So let's talk about this E. It's a very popular note on the cello. Uh, um, let's start off with uh, the neck. So if you take a look at the neck of a cello, where it starts to bend here, we're going to go ahead and place our thumb right where the bend starts. Now, right above there, we're going to place our first finger right above the thumb. And this is where uh, the E lives, roundabout. So what we're going to do is pl place our thumb there, then play. Uh, another way to help find this E is that if you touch very lightly here and play, you'll get an octave harmonic E that's eight notes higher than the original, and that can help to uh, tune our ear to that E. So, good. So now you know where you know where you're going. It's easier to get there. So let's let's do a little shifting exercise, um, going from first finger B. Then we're going to slide up to first finger E, from B to E. So, we're, and we'll play it this way. Stop, shift. Stop, back. Stop, shift. And do that a few times until you feel that the B and the E are in tune. The next step in the process is to shorten the gap between the two notes. So now... And do that a few times until you feel that that's going r well for you. Then shorten the gap even more. Okay, the last step in this process is to time the shift directly in the bow change. To time the shift directly in the bow change. This will ensure a clean sound. Uh, about 80% of the time when we're playing the cello, we want uh, the shift to be inaudible. Um, so this is a, 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 good, a, good, a good way of going about that. Um, some common pitfalls that I see uh, with players, young players, is that they tend to hop from one place to another. Um, I would avoid this. Uh, the, the, the majority of the time, we slide from one note to another. And yes, we may come out of the string slightly, but our finger never really loses contact with the string. And this is better. This really ensures that, uh, that there's no gap. You know, ultimately there's no gap between the notes. So um, this is a very popular shift. This is going from first position to fourth position. And uh, it's a, a very important shift. Now once you have this E down, finding the other notes in that position are a lot easier. For example, if you're going from B to F natural, its second finger above the first finger, E. So you could try something like this. First finger, then second finger, E. Then back down. And the same with the F sharp, which is third finger in fourth position. Stop, shift, and three. And then back down. And the same thing with fourth finger, G. Right? So um, the general concept is that of scaffolding or building on what you know. I mean, you know notes in the higher ranges based on notes that you've studied before, if that makes sense. So, uh, well, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Cello Chat. Until next time, thank you for your time.